Jim Brewer, and this is a special edition of One on One with Jeremy Heffner. Hey, Jim. Pleasure seeing you. Yeah, likewise. This is what I remember. You were, it was right around the Johan Santana days. Mm hmm. And I'm not crazy. As a pitcher, you belted a home run. Am I right or wrong? That's 100% correct. Hefner, deep toward the left field corner. Pierre looking up, and it's out of here. Jeremy Hefner with his first major league home run. He had one minor league home run in his career, and now his first hit as a big leaguer. He takes it deep to make it 4-2 to two New York. He did. Did yes. you ever hit a home run before that? Yeah, I hit one the year before in AAA. Triple A don't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. In the big leagues, no. That was my only one. So that was huge. I think that was, I only had two hits, and that was one of them. So. And that's a huge one when a pitcher does yeah, it. Yeah. I don't know. All right, so that, and you also, you won that game too, no? Yes, against the Phillies. That was my first win. It's your first win? In the big leagues. Yeah. In the big leagues, because just to me, making it to the majors is. It's an accomplishment. It's an sure. accomplishment yep. in itself, just to last that long. So tell me, what is as a person, what leads to Jeremy in his first game as a major league player? Wow, a lot. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma, a small town called Perkins, Oklahoma. It's uh, kind of in the middle of the state, a town of about 3,000 people. So New York City, very different from where I grew up. Right. Um, you pitching all the time, even as yeah, a little kid? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not so much in the league. I was actually a catcher in little league. Or, but so the coach go, listen, you're about, how tall are you? 6'4". Jeez, so you're, you're about 6'4". But I, I wasn't that way when I was little. I was much shorter and wider. And you're so a short, I, chubby I, kid. Yeah, I fit more of the catcher you're profile. Talking to, you're talking to an inner fatso kid. <laughs> I was 82 pounds in kindergarten. 82 pounds. I used to have to go to the nurse, get weighed, all that. True story. Broke 100 in the Schindelman's class, second grade. There you go. So I know exactly. Yeah. We grew up the day of junk food. Susie yeah. Q's, Yahoo. I get it. Yep. How hard are you throwing the ball in high school? Uh, 90. I went, ah. Yeah. Like, we, we say, I say 90. That was hard 15 years ago. Like, now everyone throws 90, or everyone throws 99. In high school? Yeah, I was throwing 90 in high school, yeah. So most of the kids are doing this. Oh, uh, God. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah, getting so out of the way. So all you have to do is throw it out of the plate. That's right. So what's the transition from high school where clearly mm – -hmm. You must have had no hitters. You must have had all that going on. And now you go to, uh, I guess, minor league. Mm -hmm. What is it? You still feel like you're a cream of a crop or now? The well, I went to college. I went to junior college. So I was actually fortunate enough to get drafted by the Mets out of high school. Uh, drafted in the 48th round. Um, I was grateful that the Mets wanted to take a chance on me. But I knew that I needed to go to college first. Oh, so you, d you chose it and your yeah. parents were... I'm yeah, sure for sure. For heavily involved in that and, and that decision. education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it turned out it, it worked well for me. I went to Seminole State Junior College in Oklahoma for two years, and then went to Oral Roberts University for one year, and um, started to put on some muscle and started to throw a little bit harder. I was more 92 to 95 at that point, and then the Padres drafted me in the fifth round in 2007. So then I spent five years with the Padres, and um, fortunate enough to be put on their roster. And then didn't have a very good year in AAA in 2011. Got taken off their roster. Then the Mets claimed me. So that's how I got with the Mets. And then 2012, I started the year in Buffalo. And then Johan got hurt. Johan got hurt. I remember that. Yep. And I got called up. And what a position to be in. Yes. You know, as a Mets fan, you're like, we got Yo Johan's up. Who are we calling up now? Jeremy Hefner? Who? That's who's <laughs> coming up. That's who's, this is great. All right. First game, home run, win the game. Mm -hmm. And then... Through that, to, now you got. Uh, you, so I got to touch. I got, get, yeah, go ahead. I got to touch on Johan's no hitter because I was sitting on the bench for Johan's no hitter. You are. He struck him out. It has happened. In their 51st season, Johan Santana has thrown the first no hitter in New York Mets history. Guess who was the first one on the pile? You were. I was. No way. I beat everyone out there. It's hard to tell that it's me because you can only see the back of my head. But no way. I'm yeah. gonna watch that video. Fifty-first season. Johan Santana has thrown the first no-hitter in New York. I didn't move. This was me and Dylan G and John Nees 
and RA, we were all sitting after like the third inning. Usually like you get up and you go back to the locker room, watch the game on the TV for a little bit or whatever. But after the third inning, we were cemented in, in where we were at on the bench. Did you have a feeling? I mean, Do you have a feeling it, when a guy's really, really on? I mean, obviously, but. Yeah, I mean, Johan's special and like you knew, he was getting older at that point, but like you watch all of his uh, uh, in between start routines and all that kind of stuff. Like you knew that he was setting himself up. Like he was feeling good about himself, where his changeup was, all those types of things. So you knew, like if he could, if he could just get on a little bit of a roll, like he had a chance. And mm. St. Louis was no slouch no. in 2012. That was a really good. That team. was a great ball team. Yeah. So to do it against that team, like that was a that was one of my career highlights was being able to witness that and wow. be out there. Yeah, it was really cool. Really cool. I always wanted this just because even as a kid. Even if it's wiffle ball, I still remember the moments <laughs> of beating Mr. Kaufman and his whole family's team from something happened when I was eight years old, mm -hmm. 14 year old. Three years ago in our neighborhood, we had a, a wiffle ball tournament. The guy brought in hurl at professional wiffle ball players. I hit a grand slam, win the Whoa. game, struck out the. You mentioned the no hitter, but is there, even when you're home, once in a while you smile and you think of this moment or that moment that's still. Maybe when no one's home, you act it out. There's got to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, what are those moments? I think, I think. Or moment. You got one? I, I think when I, I made a couple of relief appearances and running in, opening that door and running in to a stadium full of Mets fans, um, pitching. I, so I pitched in the Subway Series in relief once, and I started in the Subway Series in Yankee Stadium. Packed house and went seven innings. Like, that's the highlight of my career. Like, the seven line army was up in the corner um, chanting, you know, let's go Mets and the Yankees I fans are booing. Exactly. Yeah. That's when I discovered who they were. Yeah. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to pitch that game and that's that's what I remember is facing Ichiro and A Rod and um, and winning that game and just the the division of the city between the Mets and the Yankees is will always be. Um, but that was just that was a cool moment in my career. Something I always kinda look back on. It's pretty that's yeah. and so now I guess each kid is different but what what do you bring in they look up to you because you're so close in age what uh, yeah I think that has something to do with it I think I'm I'm looked at more as a peer than as like a coach that's had all this coaching experience I I'm not too far I'm only two years removed from playing right so like they look at me and and at all of my advice and, and coaching whatever I have to offer is based on me playing and then the little bit that I'm learning now on the fly. And so um, what, what did I want to know as a player? Yeah. And I, that's the filter that I try to look, look through. So that's what you look at and that makes life easier. What yep. did I want as a, as a pitcher, what they yep. can bring me. And are there certain coaches, always, I always wonder about this with the ball players, and you get certain guys that have so much talent, and great hitters, great pitchers, but are there certain coaches when you reach this level that really do make a huge difference yeah in a career or I think it's knowing when to get out of the way and when to get in the way right, right. so like if you have a good like we have a really good group of 25 guys and a lot of ours is just stepping back and letting them perform because we have really good players and then when we do say something then at that point it's like oh th this is serious and they really mean it like maybe I should take this advice and so it's it's like a good dad My exactly dad never said nothing yep well, whenever I got a little out of line he'd come in like hey yep come on oh okay and mm -hmm. you knew you knew that right was but if you're always nitpicking and always reactive then and sometimes you, the players will, they won't take what you have to offer as serious. So that's what we try to, we try to do is just let the, let the players play. And then when we need to alter course or make an adjustment, then we, we make that, that suggestion. All right, I have a wacky question. I was just on tour with the band Metallica. And the most fascinating thing to me was before they go on the show, they get together and they jam for 35 minutes. And I asked, are you just, are you rehearsing? He went, no, I don't know what everyone's personal life, the lead singer said, everyone's personal life, this guy's having, you know, he's talking, he's going through this with his kid and through this with his wife and this one's going through this and the other thing. This is the only time where we're a unit and we get to put everything away and then we go up. Mm -hmm. Things that fans don't realize 
is that you're a person. Mm -hmm. All these guys are persons. Mm -hmm. This guy's 23. He may have a girlfriend. He's driving nuts. This one's got a wife. Maybe he's going through a divorce. Or they're having a girl. He's pregnant. He's worried about when the mm -hmm. baby's going to be born. How, how do you balance that? Got a big game, and there's something. Can you tell right away when something's going on at home, mm -hmm. and you got to bring them? Yeah, I back think it's just it. about channeling, channeling that positively. So if they're going through struggles, like maybe this is their their time where they can detach from that and and just focus on the game. And I think the baseball team is no different than the band. Like if the drummer's off beat, or if the bass player's not in tune, or whatever the case may be, then the whole team, the whole band suffers. No different if the relievers aren't on top of their game, if the outfielders aren't on top of their game, then, then we're out of balance a little bit. So it's all about um, being accountable to each other and yeah. while also um, encouraging each other and, and lifting each other up and trying to be as positive. Because this game especially like can be, uh, it's a game of failure. And so it doesn't matter, like you can be the best pitcher on the planet, Max Scherzer, and you're gonna go through failures, right? Right. Or a Noah Syndergaard or a Jacob deGrom, like you're gonna go through failures. Um, it's how you deal with those failures. And, and that's no different than life. You're gonna go through failures in life. And it's all about how you respond to that failure mm -hmm. and not so much that you actually went through the failure because everyone goes through failure. Well, you've done an amazing job. I don't know what's going on in that bullpen. <laughs> you don't threaten me too much because I'm a National League guy. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about you, but I'm definitely going to be rooting for the Twins this year. Awesome. Especially when I know they've got people like you helping them out. Yep. Thanks, Jim. And I wish it's all the best to your family. I know he's got three girls. Three girls. Same. And one boy. Not same. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and your wife is the same. we got same. good wives. That's for sure. We're 100%. marriage warriors. That's right. We're warriors. That's right. That's what makes the world go round. Yep. Great talking to you. Like, Jim, thanks for having all me. All the best to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank no, you. Thank you. Yep.